gonna say hello? You gonna sit with me this time? Good girl. Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine Material Graph. Today we're looking at Hue Shift. So, the Hue Shift node, uh, while very similar to Hue Jackman node, but not as good looking, is used to shift the hue of a color value. So, if we plug our color into the texture bit and the hue shift percentage in S, so this is a zero to one value. If I was to slide this over, you can see it cycles through all the colors and when it reaches one again, it'll be back where it started. So one and zero, same thing. We've done a 360. If into the hue shift percentage, we instead put a time node, which goes into a sign, uh, then we add one to bring it from negative one to one to zero to two. And then if we divide it by two, then we've got a zero to one. So this is going to go all the way up and then stop and go all the way back down in a, in a sine wave fashion. If we wanted it to just go continuously through all colors, then you could just plug time in it because this percentage here, the zero to one value, it will wrap around. So if I put in two, then two would be the same as putting in one or zero or negative one. It gets back to its original position. Now, if we wanted to do something a bit more subtle, we could use the sine wave, but after we've offset it by one value, we can divide it by a bigger number. So this will sort of only shift between red to yellow, a bit green actually. Um, we can go even further, you know, divide it by 25. This will sort of only alternate between, you know, red and its nearest neighbor. If we wanted it to go from red towards purple and blue, then we can just make this a negative. So, you know, negative 25, I guess. And now it's going from red to blue and back or red to purple and back. Uh, we could divide this by a hundred and it would be super, super subtle, you know, nice little shift between colors. And so this can be super handy instead of using a like luminosity variation uh, in a texture. Let's say we just had a, a cloud noise texture and we can just plug that into the, the hue shift percentage. Now, obviously this is super drastic, but again, if we were to divide this so that the, the ones become 0 0.1, so divide it by 10, then we get a very much more subtle variation without having to lerp between, you know, two colors. And also the benefit of this is that it gets all of the in-between colors, whereas a lerp tends to be more gray in the middle sometimes because it's actually lerping straight between two values. This one is shifting between the, the color wheel. So let's just say this was a big ass tree or something. I don't know. It's, it's just a, it's a huge ball. Uh, it's a long ball, long ball. And maybe we want to change the color really gradually. So we could do something else like world position we could mask it in the B channel. Then we could divide this by a number. Then we run that into a sine wave and let's offset this sine wave so that it behaves how we expect it to. And then if we just put this into the hue shift percentage, we up this number a bit. And now you can see we've got a big Easter egg. It's kind of dumb. Uh, <laughs> so what we can do is again, divide this by a more extreme number and we get some nice hue variation based on world position. Uh, we can also make this, you know, softer by dividing it by a bigger number. We could even make it more subtle. Once again, divide by 25. You know, really, really subtle variation there. If we wanted it to go the other way, so we wanted it to go from red to a bluer one. Once again, we'll make this a negative, negative 25. And now it's going to go towards purple. Now, this might look stupid on this big, long sphere. But when you think about it in terms of, you know, I, I do something similar here with my trees uh, and in my, my new fog system, which, you know, I think looks pretty spectacular, just for a little extra variation, instead of lerping, so if I just, if I just zoom out a bit, so you can see I use it here by getting fog color one, which is the sort of the sunny side of the, um, of the fog. And then I hue shift it by 10% to get this purple. Otherwise, it doesn't sort of blend as nicely. Um, like, obviously this blends fine, but it sort of goes gray in the middle. But by using hue shift, we sort of bridge the gap between the orange and the blue by shifting the hue so that there's a bit of pink purple in the middle. And that sort of bridges the gap 
and turns this into, you know, a nice color rather than being gray if it was like a, a two color lure. So yeah, that's another advantage of hue shift is that, you know, I can just have two fog colors being the middle and the outside one. Uh, and then I can use hue shift on one of them in a three lerp to sort of get that extra color in the middle without having to actually set that anywhere. I don't have to have a separate, you know, time of day curve for that. So if I was to hit simulate and go to my time of day manager, um, you'll be able to see that as my sun goes down, I'm changing the colors of these fog values, but this middle one here being the, the purpley one or the pink one, this is now, you know, deep lavender purple. And this is sort of a gold sunset color. Um, this middle one here is just a hue shifted version of this color. Right, so that's the hue shift node. Basically to reiterate, it just shifts the hue or the color of any given texture or color that goes into its input. Uh, can be used for color variation as opposed to luminosity variation. Um, it can be used for, you know, making your leaves look nice and varied if they're all just a solid color. And it can also be used to sort of eliminate those gray values in between when you're lerping between two colors. You can hue shift one of the colors a little bit, put that into a three color lerp as the middle value, and it will lerp between them a bit more artistically. So as always, if you found this educational and or entertaining, don't forget to like and subscribe and you know, ring the bell and blah, blah, blah. And if you are fanatical about what we do here on the channel, make sure you check out our Patreon in the description. And if you would like to learn alongside me and a bunch of other people, I do stream on Twitch, um, mostly doing a lot of just shader shenanigans while I work on my game and the visuals of my game. And so, you know, a lot of people find that really handy because they can just ask questions and I can just answer it on the spot and give them an example and whatnot. So I hope you had fun and learned a lot. Uh, but with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.